Awesome series coming up, guys. My highlight of the day. A PVZ between the best protos on the planet and one of the best Zerks on the planet. Raynor versus Max Pex. Game one is going to be played on Heartland. Your highlight of the month. We'll see Raynor tonight as well on the Basilisk Big Brain Bouts at 9 p.m. If you guys want to see Raynor play some more TVZ, we're going to do that at 9 p.m. Rainer is, of course, the Italian Zerg player in the top left side. Two wins and one loss. Max Pax is the Danish Protoss player in the bottom right side. Two wins and one loss. Max Pax defeated a Protoss in the second round. Uh, no, he defeated Ragnarok in the second round. Shin. Forgot who he beat in the first round. Maybe that was a Protoss. And he lost to Hero. Raynor lost to Saro and then beat Beyond. He beat Firefly here. Yeah. Max Pax beat Firefly. No, Raynor beat Firefly, sorry. Raynor beat Firefly yesterday. 2-0. Lost to Saro. And also beat Beyond. 2-1. Hmm. Here we go. I saw it, Multi. I just see it now. Japan is back in the mix. Adept Stargate, Max Pax is incredibly good with Adepts and Oracles. It will be interesting to see if he can find the same amount of success in killing drones against Rainer as he is against many of the other Zergs. I wanted to check my phone, by the way, because I may have... I don't really want to spoil it yet, but I may have an announcement of an announcement for you guys. I guess uh, nobody's awake yet, so we don't have an announcement of an announcement yet. But I do think that I have a little tiny surprise for you guys tonight. When it comes to Rainer versus Clem. Mm -hmm. Oracle is going to give high ground vision to the Stalker. Rainer is going to try to keep this Overlord alive for as long as possible. I think the Stalker should... Well, not gonna be that easy actually. Very quick third base on Max Pax his side. Keeping the Oracle at home. Now we're gonna dance. No, oh, if Rainer Oh, it's still alive! <laughs> now send it back again to the other side. Uh. Mm -hmm. Is the announcement that tonight's BB is going to be a best of 45? No. But it is related to Rainer versus Clam. Two oracles have killed a Cryptomore so far, nothing else. Max Pax being very cautious with them. Most of the time, Max Pax steps it up once he has three oracles. What he does better than anybody else out there is where he's got the two groups of oracles. He has two oracles looking for damage somewhere, and then one leftover oracle looking for damage by itself. As Max Pax says, if I cannot kill drones, I'll just kill a queen instead. Killing a queen early is big. Raynor opens up with plus one melee. That's kind of cool. You might be onto something, Bercoco. You might be onto something. I just need it to be approved, but I think it will be. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be. One Oracle is going to try to get lucky in the main as the Adepts and two other Oracles are going to battle Lings and Queens on the edge of Creep. Rainer is very quick with the surround, but now he needs to worry about that one Oracle in the main and the two Adepts over here. So far, so good for Rainer, though. That Oracle a little bit inactive. Tiny bit inactive, so Reina's defense is very good. And this may have looked easy, guys, but there are so many drones, who, uh, so many Zergs who end up losing 10 drones, 12 drones, 15 drones here. Rainer instead loses barely anything. Lost one queen, but five and a half minutes in. Max Pax is realizing that Rainer is not one of those other Zergies that he's bopping very often. We know that Rainer is playing a lot at the moment. He's been streaming a lot, participating in online tournaments. Kid is really getting ready for Katowice. Is Coco casting with you? That would be awesome, but no, it's not Coco. I don't know if Coco, her passion is that big for a TVZ. I guess. I think for a Clem Rainer TVZ, it would be pretty big. No, not Coco. Mm -hmm. Zero drone so far. I think at least one. I feel like I saw one drone die in the very beginning. Mm-hmm. 
can say anything, guys. Just be here tonight at 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. Roach one and infestation pit going down. Reyna obviously has the luxury of having an early plus one. He's morphing a couple of banelings, so he's gonna try to surprise Max Pax. While Max Pax is thinking of, ooh, does that? No, Oracle hasn't seen it yet. Let's see how good the minimap awareness is of the Prince of Denmark. Obviously, these banelings do not have banelink speed, but hey, even slow banelings pack a punch. Yeah, it felt that the spidey senses were tingling, but he hasn't quite done it yet. Rainer is doing a lot of things at once, though. A seven minute hive. Playing a dangerous game here. Moves a couple of links forward to activate that stay strap immediately. Here come the links and Bane's probes are a little bit stuck. Banelings will connect. Minus 11. Close call there, guys. Incredibly close call. But in the end, it works out. 11 probes do fall. Pylon falls. The battery falls. And Max Vex is forced to recall the stock is home. I didn't want to say it, but it's probably Pokemania. He's not aware of it yet, but... Tonight is Pokemon's debut in the StarCraft 2 scene. I told her Rainer and Clam both absolutely amazing kids, very talented. It is time for Queen Pokey to make an appearance in our beautiful scene. <laughs> I told her all about you as well, Goblin. I was like, can I interest you in a Goblin uh, best of five? And she's like, sure, if you think you can play. I was like, I don't think he can make it actually. My boy doesn't play that much. Links do surround one of the stalkers here on creep as Max Pax is going to take full advantage of that choke point with the rocks. Makes it very hard for all the links to fight at the same time. But 8 minutes and 22 seconds into the game, Rainer is on 80 something workers and has his first Vipers on the way. Now Max Pax is obviously getting a good army. I do believe he's still single Robo, right? As he's hitting a supply block. That is a very big supply block on Max Pax's side, guys. 148 out of 148, and he did not have a single pylon on the way. A couple of three, three, uh, crypto is getting picked off as Max Pax is sending a war prism in between some of the bases. It is hard for Reyna to take good fights against Colossus if the Vipers do not have energy to abduct, but I do believe they do at the moment. Crazy how aggressive Max Pax is, even though he's down 40 supply, but. He's obviously trying to figure out what exactly he needs to worry about. He sees that the hive is done. We'll probably see that spawning pool wiggle as well if we take a look, little look at it. <laughs> War Prism gets abducted. War Prism will get picked off. I think the recall was probably still on cooldown. So nothing that Max Pex would really do about it. That is indeed a crazy result, Multi. What a start to our day. Ultralisk Cavern goes down. Still single Robo for Max Pack. So it is going to be a little bit hard to get a whole bunch of Immortals and Archons out all of, them, all of a sudden. But I also think it will always be hard for Raynor to attack into stasis traps for days. Shield batteries that can overcharge and obviously cannons as well. Max Pack's fires up Storm. Find that a tiny bit surprising. It's not bad, obviously, against all the links and banes. It's actually pretty good. I'd still say, why don't you have a second robo here? I would have like three robos because I'd be floating money. There goes our second robo. I ask and I shall receive. I think it makes a lot of sense to get one here. Because you obviously need everything out of that robo. You need Colossus. You need Immortals. You need War Prisms. You need Observers. And one robo can only do so much. 11 minutes in. This game is not disappointing as Raynor is setting up maybe a monstrous link counterattack. Not monstrous. It's pretty big, but there is also a stasis trappy. One link is leading the charge. Maybe looking to activate that stasis trap. Max Pax is zealous. I can give him the heads up, but do we have a stalker in the wall of? Yes. Nice blink as well. He actually protects his stasis trap. Very good defense here by Max Pax. Sees it on the right moment. Sounds fun, multi. Have, have a good time, mate. Let us know how it goes. I hope you've been working on those shuffling skills, if you know what I mean.
don't know if you follow uh, Card Magic by Jason on Instagram, but I would not invite that guy to my home game. <laughs> if I do, I would never, ever, ever let him deal. He is cool, though. I really like him. I'd love to watch one of his shows one day. Max Pax is going to try to get up to five bases as Raynor obviously has tried to make stuff happen, but it is very difficult for the Zerg to get a Protoss out of the game, especially if they get this many cannons and batteries. Kudos to Max Pax for still having all three Oracles alive. A truly underappreciated skill that the best Protoss players out there have. First storms have landed on the links. Two Ultras cannot really continue to fight there, so Rain has to disengage. Crazy amount of minerals in the bank, not that much gas. 12 minutes in, prediction is about to end. What did you guys vote for, but very even. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing, because the game is still very even after 12 minutes. Someone probably already asked this, only 384 times since the beginning of January, mate. We don't know. I don't know. Nobody really knows. But he has his reasons for it. I... I, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of tired of talking about it. Kind of tired of speculating. I just enjoy his games. I think he is an amazing player. If tournament organizers have no problem with him playing, then I'm here to just enjoy his games and talk about all the things that make him a fantastic Starcraft 2 player. Maybe one day we'll know at the moment we don't know. First carriers are on the way. We don't have air weapons yet. Actually, we have plus one air weapons, sorry. But we don't have a plus two air weapons the way. As a couple of bailings try to wiggle their way into that center base, but that doesn't work either. Max Pax is living up to maybe the reputation that Showtime has created for himself, where he is just the wall. I do like that he still, I think, has a prism in the top right side, so he has an idea of Rainer's trying to take that base or not. Double Spire for uh, Rainer. He's gonna get a Greatest Spire and a Regular Spire at the same time, so he can make Brute Lords if he wants to, and he can obviously get two upgrades at the same time as well. Upgrades are very important for Corruptus. Especially if the carriers get good attack upgrades, and Max Pax is definitely working on those. I don't think it is shady at all. Like I don't think shady is the right word. Like, a lot of you guys are anonymous to me, but I'm not telling you guys that you can't play in the European Pro Tour Weekly. Like, that's not a thing, right? I'm not gonna say that I think you are shady, Tuts, because you're in my Twitch chat, but I don't see your picture. <laughs> I, uh, I don't really think there is anything wrong with that. I have an... I mean, I don't want to talk about it forever. As I said, we've already covered all of it, and we've beat it to death many times. I have absolutely no problem with online tournaments. The one where it's online regionals that have an impact on an offline tournament. There, I do think you can have a discussion about it, whether or not you should allow it. Obviously, this has been brought up to ESL many times. I am not a referee. Uh, everybody has given their opinion. ESL is obviously aware of everything, but, you know, it is what it is. In the end, they decide, and if they are happy with Max Pax playing online, but not necessarily going to the offline event, even though it can have a bit of an impact on it, it's up to them, right? They are the ones running the tournament, they are the ones make the rules. They can have our opinion about it, whether it's good or bad, but for an online tournament like this on Masters Coliseum, I really don't see why you would have a problem with it. I know that some people bring up the arguments like, yeah, but other players have a camera and he doesn't, so he doesn't get nervous. I highly doubt that Rainer gets nervous because his webcam is on. I have absolutely no issues with that. <laughs> cheating is an issue potentially? No, that is not an issue, mate. First of all, Rainer could be cheating just as likely as Max Pax would be cheating right now. Just because we see his face, it doesn't mean that we know that he is not cheating. Second of all, it is incredibly easy and obvious to spot cheaters in StarCraft 2. 
I feel like people who worry about cheating are people who don't really understand high level Starcraft. On top of that, the stream that we are watching has a delay. So no, that is not an issue. That is not a potential threat. Seeing somebody's face does not make it less likely or more likely that they are cheating. <laughs> yes, every player can opt out, but I do believe there is a penalty for not having a webcam. And obviously Max Pax eats that penalty. So, if Rainer does not want to play with a webcam, he is allowed to, but he would get fined. Just like Max Pax gets fined. What is the penalty that varies per tournament? As we have a potential mothership going into the main base and we could have a big old Rico. Where are we going to Rico? This is fun. Zest, I think, was the very first one to ever do this. Now if Max Pax does this, oh, Corruptors are on the chase. He needs to recall right here, right now. He needs to do it very quick as motherships die quickly. It's too late. It is too late. No Rico into the main. Max Pax can obviously try again in the future, but it's not going to work this time around. I see question marks. I mean, I don't know. I think it was Max Pax's plan, obviously, to go for a big old Rico. Uh, he decided against it. Why did he decide against it? That I don't know. Maybe he saw something that scared him, or maybe he was looking elsewhere and all of a sudden the Corruptors were there. I cannot tell you guys what happened there. I'm sure it's not what he had in mind, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it happens. It is still a very competitive game where I think Max Pex is looking pretty damn good. He was unbreakable in the first 15 minutes. Now it all comes down to the Battle of the Spellcasters. It is Feedback versus Abduct and Parabomb. As a Feedback lands on one of the Vipers, lands on the second Viper as well. Only a single Abduct goes off. I do think that these Ultras are going to die. The Corrupt account is not crazy high. Max Pax in the end decides to recall out now. Maybe lost one more carrier there. Actually loses the Oracles as well. Surprised that he decided to recall there. I thought he was doing alright in that fight. And the Corrupt account wasn't crazy high, but had a lot of units in production and maybe wanted to fight with a bigger army. Mm -hmm. Feedbacks were good, but Rainer did land still one Abduct. I think it is safe to say that these two are very evenly matched in a 19 minute game. Oh. As Banelings did blow up 14 probes and the High Templar and more Banelings have blown up probes elsewhere. I mean the Observer is not showing us so I don't really know where it's happening but 31 probes have died in total. That's a serious amount of workers. As a Rainer is now going to try to make progress with a lot of Spore Crawlers in the center of the map as we are almost entering minute 20. How are these upgrades on the Corruptors? If I was Max Pax, guys, I would really start fighting here. Fighting with heart and commitment. Because right now you have plus three air weapons. You have a bunch of carriers. He's getting Arkles. He's getting Void Rays. If he would force the fight right here, right now, he's got way better air upgrades than Raynor. It is pretty likely, I think, that he wins the fight. The longer he waits, the more that Raynor is going to catch up in the upgrades, the harder it becomes to win some of these fights. Rainer is the one who's going to send the Corruptors forward. I don't think he really killed one there. Mm. There's a good chance he got Sauron. But I believe it only has a positive impact. Plus two attack, or flyer weapons, and plus two carapace for the Corruptors is now done. Means Max Pax still has an upgrade lead, but it's tinier than it was before. As Rainer is looking for an abduct, Rainer gets the abduct. Max Pax does not land a feedback. So that used to be a thing, Jota Cakes, and they kind of just stopped with it. I guess they just feel like it's not worth it. Three Ultras should never be enough to uh, keep this massive army at bay. And Max Pax is going to get on top of the Spore Crawlers. And what is Rainer doing? Rainer is attacking probes in the bottom left. Mothership is looking for another Rico in the main. And this time around, I do think it's going to work. Ultras are so good, by the way, against carriers. And carriers are amazing, but when they are attacking Ultras, it's starting to look like Roddy lifting gyms, uh, weights in the gym. Well, obviously, Max Pax is not going to target these Ultras. One Void, chipping away at Brute Lords. Mothership now shows up. Feedback lands on the Infestor. Two more Ultras pop. The first one does die very quickly. That's four Ultras low in HP that are going to die very quick. Every single High Templar did die there. But can Rainer kill this many carriers with plus three? He drops the Parabomb. I don't think Rainer has enough anti-air. 
Max Max spreads his air unit, splits off the one carrier that's affected. Rainer's gonna go for it, but Cloaking gets used. There is four crawl. I don't know if there is an overseer. Yes, there is an overseer. I want to say I think I like it for Max Packs, but a lot of carriers are dying. Void Rays are flying over Spore Crawlers. Is it enough Corruptus for Raynor in the end? I mean, obviously the second wave of Corruptus is going to be good enough. Is the first wave of Corruptus good enough? It is starting to look like it as one Void Ray sleeping on the job. Now all the extra Corruptus show up. And with that, Raynor is going to clean this up. Raynor had like a hundred supply in production there. Not a single storm indeed was dropped. Rainer wins game one against Max Pax. A fun one where he looked good. I think Max Pax missed a tiny bit of an opportunity when Rainer only had plus one carapace. It makes such a night and day difference. If you have quick upgrades on your carriers and you have Archons and Void Rays and you have plus three on everything, I think that's when you want to fight. The longer you wait, the worse it gets. And Corruptus becomes so tanky if the upgrades get better. That is correct, Vapor. It is now an ability that you activate and then it lasts for a little while. Hmm. Rainer now one map away from joining his teammate Cero in the playoffs of the Masters Coliseum 7. Because I'm getting a little bit lightheaded. As I realize it is 2.30 and I didn't eat anything yet. Vicky! <laughs> Yeah, that is uh, very impactful as well. Like these fights, there's a lot of things that matter, obviously. Upgrades, incredibly important. Spellcasting, incredibly important. Whether it's Pharaoh Bombs, Abduct, Feedback, Storms, all of that matters. And then the last one is definitely Archon positioning on the ground. That can also really make a night and day difference. Because even if the Archons don't attack the Corruptors, if you force the Corruptors to move, they are not firing. And anything that's moving is taking damage, so... It often comes down to a mix of all those things that I just mentioned. Spore Crawlers uh, participating in the fight obviously helps as well. Game 2. Oceanborn, guys. Game 2 will be Oceanborn. Top left side. We are looking at the main base of Basilisk. Rainer, the Italian Stallion. One map away from joining his teammate Cero in the playoffs. In the bottom right side. Is that Artanis, guys? Who is that guy? We are looking at the main base of Psystorm Gaming's Max Packs. I know absolutely nothing about the lore and the name. It is Artanis. Look at me, I'm a nerd, baby. I am a nerd. Mm -hmm. No idea what you're asking, Kaki. Mm -hmm. Hello, Logic. Good evening, sir. What are you guys talking about, NJW Boom? I've literally never read those two words. Is it an anime show? That's what it sounds like. But anime? Okay. Yeah, I stopped after Dragon Ball Z. I did love Dragon Ball Z, though. Go to series. Mm hmm. I wonder if Rainer ever watched Dragon Ball Z. I feel like he's too young for that. Or Max Pax. He did? Okay. Do you, do, you think, do you guys think that Max Pax watched Dragon Ball Z? I should write it down. Next time I do an interview with Max Pax, I'm going to ask him. I want to know more about Max Pax. Did he watch Pokemon? Does he collect cards? Did he watch Dragon Ball Z? <laughs> Uh, Barry gifting not one but two subs. Thank you so much, mate. Let's go. Receive one, gift two. Thanks for the sub early. I just saw it. Yeah, I gifted you a sub because you made me laugh. <laughs> DBZ is like religion in Mexico. When I was a kid, we fucking loved Dragon Ball Z. And obviously there was no internet yet, so we just watched it on cable television. And you guys don't know the pain and frustration that once we entered uh, the Cell Saga, no, the Android Saga, they just restarted all over again from the very first episode. And the next day that everybody went to school, we're like, no, why? And then we had to wait like two months until we would get up to that point. 
And then there was a new episode, and we're like, oh my fucking god. And then the Android saga, saga was done. And then it started all over again, and we had to wait another few months until we could finally watch the Cell Saga. <laughs> and yeah, well, nobody ever missed an episode, Georgie. Don't say crazy stuff. Also, uh, <laughs> this is for all the old people out there. I also had a VHS recorder. And if there was ever something that I had to do during the time that Dragon Ball Z was played, I would record it on my VHS. And then once I came home, I could watch it back. <laughs> Quality was terrible, but I wouldn't miss an episode, baby. That's impossible. <laughs> Kev, have you watched King Arthur and the Knights of Justice? No. What is that? A story about Nurcio and... The other Zergis out there in Poland? I've never seen that, mate. I've heard about it. It is a Void Ray first. This time around for Max Packs. Maybe Max Packs not totally ha- Ooh! What? 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 I love it! Void Ray into Triple Stargate. What? <laughs> Mass Phoenix, baby! He's doing that because he knows that he's my favorite player on the planet. <laughs> Now it all comes down, guys, to what Rainer is going to expect. Now the fun thing is that if you think of what is meta and what is common in this day and age, is that it's often a Void Ray into a quick Twilight Council and then a bunch of Adepts. What do you want against that? A Roach Warn. Because you need a couple of Roaches to make sure that you have an answer for all of these Adepts. Rainer is dropping a Roach Warn. And if Rainer stops at like 55 drones and then builds a bunch of Roaches, He's going to be in trouble against Mass Phoenix. Unless he can maybe turn it into like a Queen Roach Ravager all in. Scouting is massive, but it's so difficult as a Zerg to scout this. Max Pex is going to warp in a Adept. Where he's like, hey man, it's going to be Resident Glaive Adepts. If I were you, I'd make Roaches. What Rainer would love to do if he had our vision, I think it's just go up to four bases right now and 85 drones. That's what you do. Or you can maybe spam a million links and banes and try to overrun your opponent. It is one of the two. It's either all-out macro or all-out ling aggression. What you don't want to do is build roaches of a shit economy. So far, Raynor is not doing that. Raynor is going up to a pretty high drone count. I do expect roaches now. Do not building any roaches now would be crazy, but... Ah, Raynor's spidey senses are tingling and he's gonna see the phoenixes before he has even built a single roach. So you gotta be pretty happy with that. What he does not have, though, is a fourth hatchery. Phoenixes could lift the drone. Phoenixes will lift the drone. I wonder if Rainer is thinking about some sort of a Nidus attack now. It is risky, because if you can't get the Nidus online, you're obviously in trouble. Overlord gets found. Phoenix count pretty damn high for a six-minute game. Uh, screen positioning is... Incredibly crucial here. I also love how quickly Max Rex is getting close when air weapons. He's gonna lift those three queens. Phoenix count is very high, and that is, I think, at least one queen dying. I don't think Max Rex can stick around forever because some of his phoenixes are low in HP. And it's hard to kill queens without plus one. There is our Nidus. Man, I am so good at commentating this video game. Right? Anybody proud of me? I'm proud. I am good. Don't ever let somebody shit-talk your old man, okay, chat? <laughs> I'm the greatest. I don't want to say I'm the GOAT, but I can't think of anybody else. Where is that knight is gonna go up? Look at the minimap. We have a Ling on patrol at the potential 4th base and 5th base of Max Pax. If that first knight is comes online, this is obviously going to be very fun. Max Pax is now going into Void Rays as well. The Adepts, they feel it! Max Pack says, this is going really good. You're probably attacking me, right? And yes, he is. But he can't kill the Nidus in time. Where did that OG Void Ray go, by the way, guys? Where did our OG Void Ray go? But he can maybe lift Queens one at a time. I don't know about this, Rainer. Oh, that's a big mistake. Rainer thought about unloading everything. He's now going to unload it. But he's already lost so many Queens. This is not going to work. Or is it going to work? Queens are good. Did I just stop the Queens? I'm afraid that losing those queens this early is very problematic. Is, do you guys think that Reynos is even going to build spore crawlers here? I kind of think that he needs spores. Because these queens are going to die eventually. 
I don't see it work, but maybe Corrosive Imagine if the Phoenix is clomp up. We don't have road speed, but he doesn't have any roaches either. It is Queen Ravager. Ah, he's gonna spam so many Ravagers that there is actually a chance that they can connect with some of these uh, flying units. Ozzy Maxpex knows that time is on his side. He knows that Rainer is very committed to this. He's kind of all in. Uh, cannons and batteries will die very quickly. Charge is gonna finish up as well. And if Max Pack shows up with a bunch of zealots, I don't think it's gonna work for Rainer. It's building more and more and more queens. Don't forget that the Phoenixes and the Voidrays have plus one. The Voids are gonna try to snipe the Nidus, by the way. And Rainer did build a couple of sport crawlers here. I, just, I, I think it's going to all take a little bit too long. There are links now on the production tab as well. This is going to be it, guys. It comes down to the corrosive balls. Rainer's going to spam them everywhere. We have a battery overcharge as well. A couple of the Phoenixes will fall. The Void Rays have a hard time really finding the kind of fight that they like. Looking somewhat promising, but I still don't really believe because I think cannons, immortals, Void Rays and battery overcharge is a little bit too much to deal with. Rainer is definitely making it close, but once a couple of the queens start dying, all of them will die. It's a bit of a domino effect. Would have been awesome if the sport crawlers were forward. Rainer is up in supply, but I still like it more for Max Vex. The Phoenixes are low in HP, though. The Phoenixes are low in HP, and that is where it could become a little bit scary, but most of the Ravages are dead, and now it comes down to Roaches, but all the Immortals have died. Max Vex still up in Workers. What does Rainer have extra? More Roaches, more Ravages. And Phoenix low in HP now. Actually, looks promising. Coco's second overcharge is going to be ready. That went surprisingly good for Rainer, if you ask me. And Force Wheel goes down. There aren't too many Ravages. Here is Coco's second overcharge, and Rainer needs to respect it. And he will. Rainer is a big fan of the Coco. Who isn't? The Stalkers without Blink, not that useful. And the Roach count is so damn high again. It's amazing how many units you can produce of 66 drones. Queens are good. The Phoenixes are very low on energy. And it's starting to look like Rainer is absolutely breaking through. Still needs to be a bit careful because the Immortals can't make their way through Roaches very quickly. The Zealots have charged. Max Pex is still on 69 workers. Immortal Barry activated on all three of them. But one of them dies immediately. The second one is going to die as well. I actually think with that, Rainer does what I did not think he was going to do. And that is beat. Max Pex is very strong defensive setup here. Max Pex now gets a dark try. That's a little bit late. Mass Ravager, guys. Turns out that all you need to deal with a whole bunch of Phoenix and Immortals and Void Race is Mass Ravager with a little bit of Queen support. GG gets called. Basilisk Raynor gets the 2 0 over Max Pex. Doesn't want to look too happy, but he does give us a little thump. GG. Rainer wins 2-0. And that means that Max Pax drops to a 2-2 two two record. Rainer will join Saro in the playoffs of the Masters Coliseum. That was a cool game. I liked it. I wonder if you play that attack out again and again. If it has different outcomes or not. kind of feel like there's so much potential in both of the armies there. That, that could have gone different. 56% of you guys believed in Rainer. 44 believed in Max Pax. It is Rainer who wins. That means four best of threes are done. Two more to go. As Bad Pandano is going to gift us 20 more subs. And I see Alyssa in there. Alyssa, I'm watching some StarCraft. At 9 a.m. in the morning. I hope that it's true. <laughs> Maybe everybody else is already a sub. And now it goes to the followers or previous subs. 